Hi guys, it's a common misconception that you have to be rich to go sailing. It's absolutely not true. There are so many different ways of doing this sport without having lots and lots of money. I'm currently in Gillingham Marina in Kent in the south of the UK and every single day while I'm working on our boat, every day I see people go past and they're often older gentlemen. I'm generalizing there, but that is what I see most commonly. They're older gentlemen and a lot of the time they would love to have crew on board their boats. In fact, you often hear boat owners inviting each other out on their boats to go sailing. So two people with two boats and they may end up going out sailing on one of the boats because they don't have the crew to go out with more people on their boat. So one option is to just go down to your local marina, make yourself known, have a chat with people. People are really, really friendly in these communities and just let them know that you're wanting to go sailing and that you're willing to learn, you're willing to do what you're told and you'll often find opportunities to go out sailing absolutely for free. And not only will you get to go sailing, but you'll also get to learn from people. Some of the guys here have been sailing for 20, 30, 40 years even. So going sailing with them is an incredible way to learn how to sail too. In effect, you get free sailing lessons at the same time. So that's one way to get into sailing and it can be free. Another way is to join a local sailing club. We went to quite a few different sailing clubs in this area when we first bought Brittany. We were looking for somewhere to put her on the hard for a while and as cheap as possible and we went to so many really really friendly clubs I can't tell you how friendly people were it was it was really heartwarming to see such openness and people are so willing to help you it's a really really tight close-knit community so again you can go down to a sailing club you don't have to have a boat you can go to the sailing club you can speak to the people there you can make your intentions known, let them know that you want to go sailing and you'll often get out sailing with people. It doesn't have to cost you anything and you'll learn a lot and make some great friendships too and great memories. So that is another way of doing it. Of course you can pay to go on sailing courses and you know you might spend £500 on a course or two and I'm not knocking that, it is an extremely good professional way to learn how to sail so it's absolutely a valid option for people and they do a wonderful job so please don't take this in the wrong way. I'm not saying anything against that. RYA courses and the other courses out there in the world are extremely valuable. However, instead of spending £500 on a course or two, how about owning your own boat for that kind of money? I'm sure a lot of you will have heard of $1 boats or free boats. Yes, they absolutely do exist. You can get a boat for free. In some cases, boats are nothing but a burden for people. And often they will be more than happy to give that boat to somebody else who can take it on and give it a new lease of life and also take on all the responsibilities that go without being a boat owner. However, if the boat that you're gifted in good condition is worth $30,000, for example, and it's gonna cost you $40,000 to fix it up to get to that standard, then it's not a good deal, you know? Just because something is free doesn't mean that it's a good deal. You could spend years of your life and a great deal of money investing in something which isn't really an investment. And I'm sure there are people out there who have taken on boats like that who wish they never had. I'm not saying that all $1 or free boats are like that. There are cases where people have got a great deal and you know they have come out smelling roses after a deal like that, but that's not always the case. There's a balance to be struck. Sometimes it's better to pay something for a boat and get something that, that is gonna give you value rather than get given something and then that be nothing but a drain on you and your life. But how about a middle ground? How about a boat which is very cheap but which isn't going to bankrupt you? Well, let me introduce you to Joe Sam. This boat is currently in Gillingham Marina. She has sadly been abandoned and she's looking for a new owner. So I've spoken to the marina about this boat I've got very limited details. I'm about to cross the English Channel solo in the next couple of days, so I've got lots of passage planning to do and final preparations. I really don't have time to go into any depth with this, but despite me being in a mad rush, I wanted to show you this because I'm not gonna be here anymore, and I really wanted you to see it. This boat can be yours for around $400 or even less. Now, I speak in dollars in our videos because most of our viewers are in the US and anybody else in the world knows how the US dollar compares to their currency. If I speak in GBP, a lot of people won't know what that means. So if you've ever wondered why I speak in dollars when I'm in different countries, that's why. Let's go for a little tour of this $400 boat then. She's about 17 foot long. As I said, I don't have any of the details, I'm afraid. 
so I'm just going by eye. But here she is. Now, some people cannot see past dirt and leaves and twigs and all those other superficial things which make a boat like this look extraordinarily ugly. I can see past that and really that's down to my late father. I remember the first time I went to buy a car, I went with my, my, my dad and it was a Ford Escort, 1991 Ford Escort. It was white, but it wasn't white. It was very, very dirty. It had moss growing out of the top of the roof. And I remember my dad saying to me, oh, don't worry, Chris, it'll polish up lovely. And at the time I doubted him, I really did, but it, he was absolutely right. And that became a beautiful little car. It's the same with boats. At first glance, this looks absolutely awful, this boat, but really what you're looking at is not important it's the substance and the other structural things that we need to be looking at rather than is it dirty or is it clean so starting at the bow we've got a cqr anchor going down into an anchor locker down there cleat four stay little bow roller which is bent but that could be straightened out there's a baby four stay as well and this is a deck stepped mast which pivots about this bolt and therefore can be raised and lowered very easily. So this boat could quite easily be trailered. So that's an option for anybody wanting to buy a boat like this. You could come along with a trailer, take it out of the water, take it somewhere, store it ashore potentially for free if you've got space to do that. And then you can work on it slow time without it costing you any money for storage. Anyway, back to the boat. Let's walk along the side decks here. As I say, I believe this boat is about 17 foot long. Really nice big cockpit, plenty of room here. You could have four people on here pretty comfortably. Tiller steering, very simple, not a lot to go wrong. Place to mount an outboard there. There is no outboard engine at the moment. Below this cover, there is a fuel tank for the outboard. Depth sounder compass there is a mainsail slab reefing and a sail cover a little winch on the mast there let's go inside we'll go to the bow straight off there you are you can see the chain there coming in from outside then we've got a v-berth it's actually really quite tidy in here. It's been painted recently, fairly recently. It's got some relatively new carpet on the sides there. And the covers aren't too bad either. There will of course be storage underneath here, or stowage. Ah, there's even a toilet. That's a nice surprise. There we are, stowage. Stowage under here. Very nice, solid little port lights there. You don't see them too often these days. Nice little hatch for ventilation and potentially you can lie in the cabin there and look at the stars. How romantic is that? We've got some more sails in here. There is a little spinnaker and a jib, I believe. There's actually, it looks like there are three sails there. Don't quote me because, as I say, I don't really have time to look into any of this. I'm just going very quickly and saying what I'm seeing. Got a little galley there, portable gas stove, little sink, place to store your bits and bobs down here. And below here, there is a sea cup there. And that ball valve, I recognize that, the ISIS there, they are a good ball valve. I don't know about the skin fitting itself, I can't really see it. This is the kind of thing you need to be looking at, you know, the substance of a boat. If this fails, it could sink, so it's important to pay attention to things like that. They're not very glamorous, you know, seacocks, but they are very important. There's a little table. And there is a berth down here. And another berth down here. 
underneath the cockpit seats. Or stowage underneath the cockpit floor. Little fuse panel. And nice little windows there. You get a good view when you're in the cabin here. You get a good view outside. Of course, the headroom isn't much, but what do you expect on such a small boat? I haven't seen the keel on this boat, but we do have access to the keel bolts here. There's a really large, substantial spreader plate there. That's quite a nice design. I like that. Having said that, these appear to be stainless steel nuts and keel bolts, so they could be subject to crevice corrosion. Um, however, they do appear visibly to be in good condition from what we can see. This little boat has a really nice feel to it. It's not damp at all, and I actually think that this would make a great little boat for somebody. So overall, I believe that this is a proper little bargain. It should be taken care of, and rather than sit here for 10 years and rot away, it's right for somebody to take on this boat, give it a new lease of life, and then continue her story. She's even got four sails on board, so I'm sure you could get out and about sailing with very little expenditure. So in my opinion, this is a great little boat. You get a lot of boat for your money, and if you're looking at buying a boat, then starting like this is a really good way to do it. You know, even if you want to end up with a 30 foot boat or a 40 foot boat, it's a great experience to buy something like this and refit it. You know, refit, just tidy it up. That's a really good learning experience and you will make some mistakes on this boat and then you won't make those mistakes on a bigger boat where they will be a lot more expensive and a lot more arduous to rectify. Joe Sam isn't the only boat that they've got in that situation. This one here is another example. So this just goes to show that in pretty much every marina, there are deals to be had. There we are guys, I'm putting it out there. There are lots of different options to go sailing and you don't need to be rich. Now I'm about to go and do my passage planning for my solo English Channel sailing trip. So it's very exciting, I've got lots to do and it's time to crack on. Thanks for joining me guys. Subscribe if you're not already and I'll see you soon. Ciao.